Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host Jennifer Zheng. If you have watched the very popular movie Avada, perhaps you still remember the floating mountains on Pandora. But did you know that the filming location and the inspiration for the floating mountains of this movie is Zhang Jiajie, a famous tourist attraction in China? These are real pictures of Zhang Jiajie. Zhang Jiajie. Unfortunately, a very, very tragic event recently occurred in this beautiful scenic area. Four young people who did not know each other beforehand came here and did one thing together: they decided to stop living. Sorry, in order to avoid being marked as containing harmful content, I have to avoid. The word, the word that starts with an S. I think you know what the word is. If YouTube needs to use AI to catch so-called sensitive words, the AI should be a little smarter to make judgments as to whether I'm promoting or condemning something instead of just catching a simple word. Anyway, this event shocked China and caused many people to think. What is happening to China? What is happening to China's you young people? Today, I will talk about this incident and the profound social reasons behind it. On April fourth, around one thirty p.m., three men jumped off. The glass skywalk or glass bridge, about ten meters from the exit of the Tianmen Mountain Scenic Area in Zhang Jiajie, what you are seeing is a picture of the glass skywalk. A young woman also wanted to jump but was stopped in time. However, she still died because she had taken a lethal dose of poison before jumping. It is said that three grams of the poison are enough to be fatal, but she took fifty, and the other three men took it too. Before jumping off the cliff, the girl posted a last photo on social media with this caption: "Hello world, goodbye." The cup in the photo had two French words, "belle with written on it, which means "beautiful day." The time on the photo was 1:18 p.m. They also each, the four of them also each wrote the same note before jumping off. The content of the note was, "I'm blah blah blah, and I have the capacity for civil conduct. I'm committing the world starting with ace, and it has nothing to do with anyone else." Because the tragic incident took place at a tourist attraction where many people were present, and because the brutality of the incident was unprecedented, it immediately sparked a heated discussion on social media. And a Chinese media outlet called Life Week conducted an in-depth、uh, conduct. In-depth interviews with people who knew the four youths and thus offered us some information about the personal situations, and this is what we know now. All four young men were working outside of their hometowns in the countryside. Their ages ranged from twenty-three to thirty-four, and the youngest. Of the four is Chen Ting from Sichuan Province, which happens to be my hometown too. This is said to be a photo of her before going out to work. She had been living in a village in Neijiang City. Her 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 academic performance had always been poor, and during la and during high school, she was expelled from the school together with many other students who also didn't do well. 
Perhaps it is difficult for Westerners to understand this. In China, schools compete with each other for higher matriculation rates, and the more students with good grades, the higher the matriculation rate. Therefore, getting rid of students with poor performance is the fastest way to improve the matriculation rate. So Chen Tin left her, her hometown to work outside at the age of only 16. Her father was diagnosed with cancer last year and had been undergoing a chemotherapy. So this cost the family quite a lot of money. One of Chen Ting's friends said that two weeks ago, the beauty salon where Chen Ting worked stopped paying a guaranteed salary and only provided commission, reducing her income significantly. As a result, she quit her job. It was unknown what happened to her after that, whether she tried to find another job, how hard it was to find another job, etc. Another youth, Zhang Cai Rui, was from Dehua County in Fujian province. He was also only 23 years old. Over a decade ago, his parents divorced. His father is over 50 years old and comes from a very poor family. Because of the poverty, his two brothers, who are Zhang Cai Rui's uncles, are already in their 40s but have not yet gotten married. In the countryside of China, almost no man will choose to be single unless he's too poor to get married. The third youth, Pen Zhijun, was, was 33 years old. He came from Handan city in Hebei province. He also faced a lot of pressure in his life. The harshest one was, of course, that he couldn't find a wife as he was too poor. He was at the very bottom of the rural marriage market, ch market chain. He had no house, no a formal job. His fellow villagers say that in the village, he couldn't even lift his head up. When someone greeted him, he always lowered his head and was very reluctant to talk. His father's health began to deteriorate more than 10 years ago, and he could no longer do any physical labor, so the family was very poor. Pen Zhijun's older brother, who is more than 10 years older than him, only needed two or three thousand yuan to get married then. But now, the price to get married has increased several times, and Pen Zhijun's family has no money. His second brother also couldn't find a wife. So when Pen Zhijun was at home, he lived with his father and a second brother. By the way, in rural areas in China, women's families usually, usually ask for money, which is called cai li in Chinese, if you want to marry this woman. And there is a market price for this cai li. That's why poor men can hardly find a wife. The oldest of the four, Liu Zhiyong, come, came from a village in Henan province. Fellow villagers say if you need to use one word to describe his family, it is poor. His mother died more than 20 years ago. His father suffered a stroke many years ago and is not very mobile. His grandmother is over 90 years old. His father and grandmother lived in a very old house and are having a very hard time. Out of the four, Liu Zhiyong was the only one who ever had married, but he divorced later and his child is living with his ex-wife. Later, he fell in love again, but was reportedly cheated on by this woman. The last time he went home, he mentioned to his family that he wanted to travel outside for a while. He said he was feeling a bit down emotionally and didn't say much else. So the above is the basic situation of the four young people. Now, look at this map. 
The four red circles are where their provinces are, and the purple circle is roughly where they met and where the tragedy happened. So you can see that they lived far from one another, and their lives before their deaths did not intersect in any way. If there is one thing in common, it is that they all they were all from the bottom of society, and the poverty was their only common characteristic. It is currently unknown how the four of them knew and contacted each other and agreed to do the same thing in Zhang Jiajie. The general speculation is that they met through an online chat group. What I want to say is that in a vast sea of people, the probability of meeting three others who are as completely hopeless and desperate as you, and who also do not want to live anymore, is very small. If four such people could quickly find one another and organize the action, how many similar young people are there in China? The more I thought about it, the more I found the situation just terrifying. Contracting this is the recent online boasting by a young woman with the internet handle Arctic Catfish. She claimed that her family savings had nine digits and that their money was ripped from the chives in China. Chive is a term that ordinary Chinese people use to refer to themselves. It carries a sense of self-deprecation. They say they are just like chives, constantly growing and being harvested by the CCP. Arctic catfish already migrated from China to Australia on March 22nd this year, and she continued to make astonishing statements on Chinese social media apps, such as anyone who doesn't have a higher ranking color in their family is not qualified to criticize me. She also insulted those with lower status than her, calling them worthless rats who couldn't even lick her feet after a hundred thousand lifetimes of reincarnations. Her words sparked outrage online, and Chinese netizens discovered that she is the granddaughter of former Shenzhen Transportation Bureau Chief Zhong Gengci. Oh, Zhong Gengci, yeah. And because the online reaction was so strong, the Shenzhen Transportation Bureau actually issued an official statement saying that the person mentioned by Arctic Catfish was a former official of the Freight Transportation Division of the Bureau who retired in 2007. Netizens later discovered that, in fact, Zhong Gengci had registered a company as early as 2003 with a registered capital as much as 90 million yuan or 13 million US dollars. And in the year of his retirement, he canceled the company. And it is unclear what trick was involved behind all this. Arctic Catfish also posted a large number of photos of her grandfather, who was sent on official business to more than 30 countries 20 or 20 to 30 years ago, along with his senior or uh, senior naval friends and colleagues in the government, as well as Minister of Transportation. She invited everyone to come and worship the big shots. What I want to say is that the wealth gap exists in every society.
about the phenomena of flaunting wealth online and considering others as ignorant and low rats who can't even lick my feet after one hundred thousand cycles of reincarnation with no shame, simply because having money is something that I have not seen in other countries. This extremely shallow materialism has probably become a popular culture in today's China, which is why Arctic catfish can flaunt her wealth with such confidence and shamelessness. On the other hand, when materialism becomes a mainstream culture, it creates psychological oppression and complete despair for young people who live at the bottom of society and have no way to advance. In the meantime, the official propaganda has also been talking about how this young man has made millions by doing this, or how that young girl was brave enough to start a new business and became a billionaire in no time, etc. These kinds of false stories of success also gave real people great mental pressure, as they were think. There must be something wrong with me if others are all doing so well. In addition, the fact that the four young people who had managed to struggle in society for many years but chose to give up at the same time this year shows how serious the economic downturn in China has become. Many people. Who have lost their jobs and have no family support are really unable to survive. In our program on March 29th, we talk about the new profession of full-time child children that has emerged in China, as well as the phenomena of 100,000 lying flat lying flat youths occupying Dali. Now it seems that compared to the four young people who jumped off the cliff, being able to become full-time children and choose to lie flat temporarily in a place with a low cost of living is still fortunate. They still have parents to rely on or have some savings that allow them to lie flat. Another issue is being able to work hard and suffer hardships. Has always been regarded as a virtue of the Chinese nation and has been passed down for thousands of years. However, today's young people seem to have lost this virtue. They either choose to lie flat, rely on their parents to support, or simply give up on life altogether. In other words, why has the virtue of hard work and endurance suddenly disappeared in this generation after thousands of years? I believe that it is because in the past, no matter how hard life had been, Chinese people still believed that through their hard hard work and endurance, there was still hope for their lives. Max Weber said in his book the, Pro- the Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, quote, man is an animal suspended in webs of significance he himself has spun, unquote. Traditional hardworking and enduring Chinese people were Chinese-style Pro- Protest- Protestants. There, they were able to endure hardships and work hard because they still had ultimate concerns hanging on the web of significance called family. It was like a quasi-religious belief. However, in recent years, with rural youth leaving their hometowns, their faith in family has gradually faded, and the society. Has not provided new beliefs or new hopes for them. They can no longer find the meaning of living with tears, and the existence of the privileged class has also made the lower class lose the so-called upward mobility. 
Some say that after people born in the 1990s grown up, China has completed a generational change. This new generation will no longer work tirelessly like the previous generations, and they will be more sensitive to how much they put in, how much their return is, and develop possibilities, etc. This is of great significance and will also have political implications. Indeed, I have seen that so that many so-called little pinks who were thoroughly brainwashed by the CCP are beginning to wake up under the cruel realities and are reflecting on why they have to suffer such a fate. Some even write songs with rebellious lyrics and spread them on the internet. Therefore, this new generation who is no longer hardworking, hardworking and enduring in a traditional sense is bound to pose a challenge to the CCP, which has already developed a very successful way of dealing with the traditional hardworking and enduring Chinese. When the CCP is already facing various challenges, it remains unknown whether a large number of young people who are no longer hardworking and enduring will be the last straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please double check if you are still subscribed to my channel as YouTube keeps taking off my subscribers. And if you like my content, please spread my channel and videos or go to my website at jenniferzhengblog.com. jenniferzhengblog.com. Sign up for a membership or make a donation to support my effort. Thank you. See you.